Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Page of Swords podcast. This is episode 16, and I have Matt Kiro on today. He is a classic competitor who just competed this past weekend, right? What was the show, yes, Oklahoma? Mm -hmm. uh, what show was it? The Oklahoma Grand Prix? It's, 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 they call it the NBC. Um, it's like NBC Oklahoma Grand Prix. So it's, they, it's basically like some of the other ones you see, like in West Virginia. They call that, I think the next one coming up, they call it, yeah, they used to call it the Grand Prix. Okay. So, how'd you like that show? Um, it was my first Oklahoma show. I, I have I don't know mixed reviews about it mm -hmm. because I'm used to like the Pennsylvania shows, and I think they're a little bit bigger and more comp competition. I mean, we had about 200 competitors. They told us, okay. which with COVID was pretty good, I believe, they, from what they were saying. But like last show I did for just a novice and true novice was the Pittsburgh show in May of 2019. And that one was the one with the IFBB and the MPC together. Mm -hmm. so, and that that's obviously like one of Pittsburgh's biggest shows. So yeah, that's in a, yeah that one in the the one in August that everyone does for the pro yeah party. North Americans yeah, yeah. Which two of the biggest I believe was the Pittsburgh Championship your first ever show? Yeah, so the show in May of 2019, I I worked with Derek Natcher, Labcorn's training. And I did novice or true novice and novice only because okay. in classic, I didn't have the big enough. I, my legs weren't big enough yet. And basically all around, I just need to be bigger. Mm -hmm. And I took from that, I learned, but that show taught me a lot about the bodybuilding and like how a show works and the process that goes into it. Peak, mm -hmm. like peak week and like just a bunch of stuff. Like it taught me, it was actually beneficial to me mm -hmm. because I didn't go right into a show, just right into an open class. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot. It was kind of nice, actually. It was like baby steps to get me to where I'm at now. So, yeah, and to be honest, like that's really impressive to go straight to the Pittsburgh Championship show because you know, being that I'm in Pittsburgh too, it was like, yeah, you know, th there's a ton of smaller shows, but mm -hmm. I mean, hey, go for the big show, right? <laughs> yeah, and it's nice like doing your first open show and then you win it all, and now you're national qualified. So definitely. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Cause you just moved recently, right? When did you move? I moved to? last July, actually July of 2019. So I've been here a little bit over a year now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then I joined the gym out here mm -hmm. in about February and the, my coach Bryce, uh, it's like Bryce Pancio, he mm -hmm. owns Gorilla Performance and he was like the 2018 coach of the year out here. I mean, he's basically could be the coach of the year every year but they they really don't they just don't do it that way they do a different coach every year so but he, he has he probably the most him. athletes in any any of the oklahoma shows okay yeah i was gonna say like how's the uh oklahoma scene out there because it's you know basically like in tulsa where i live you have like my coach and then you have like smaller coaches like that are just getting started like you have like like they have a couple clients each but then in okc there's another gym out there called four star fitness which is huge like they have tons of competitors tons and tons of coaches so it's like basically you get like what you got one big gym from each side of the state mm -hmm. That's basically, so it's not like a, like Pittsburgh where you can have multiple coaches like a, with a lot of clients like Derek I know had mm -hmm. a lot of clients because he even before he even before he moved to Florida mm -hmm. so yeah I think Florida and Pittsburgh's is like main like positive yeah, people I believe so Right. Yeah. So it's good that you found somebody when you moved to Oklahoma, because I think we kind of talked about that before that you were wanting someone maybe more close to like where you moved. I needed someone to push me, basically. Like I could work out myself, but I needed someone to push me to build my legs and basically all around just build. And having that basically, honestly, without that, I don't think I would be where I'm at now. So that five days a week training, so basically six days a week training, but five days with my coach. And then one off day a week for since early February until now. So wow, so you're with them like every day. <laughs> yeah. So it was Monday through. It was basically Monday through Friday. Saturdays off. Sunday was posing every week. Plus, um, we did. It was depending on it. We did like a push pull leg day a lot. Mm -hmm. And then, but when we, when I first started prep, it was more or less like chest twice a week, legs twice a week. So it was more, wasn't as, I don't know, as like every body part together, just mm -hmm. pull, push, pull. It's, it's nice. I like doing pull, push, pull though. Gives your body yeah. a break. 
So you kind of like, you knew that your legs needed to grow. So it was like, you made sure that that was a priority and then everything else kind of fell in this. Yeah. Moment. Legs were the priority. Mm -hmm. Basically that was like, I did legs twice a week to three times a week sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then after that, like, obviously like on you arms, I need to grow my arms. Like everybody, I mean, my calves are just the average size <laughs> calves, mm -hmm. but yeah, legs are the main one. And that's what the judges feedback was in my first show. Mm -hmm. so okay. that's we, that we knew like any even Derek knew that's what we had to grow before I switched uh coaches so yeah and you've been able to keep a good shape I mean I know that the goal is to keep growing and add more size but just the dramatic difference I, I'm looking at the NPC website and it's like such a dramatic change but it's crazy because when I got my, my feedback from the judges this time it was like one of the judges told me he's like keep your waist small like his classic it's about the small waist and you know we talked about this waist training Yes. And my coach is big with waist training, but a lot of like the guy that I beat in the overall, like he mm -hmm. had a blown out gut, like a blown, like he didn't have a waist. Like it was just there and he had no ab definition at all. Oh, but really? um, waist Well, I guess if the abs were blown out or the stomach was descended and yeah. Yeah. And he was, and he was an older guy too. He was like in his thirties. So he's competed like a lot, many times before this wasn't his first, like he won an overall before. So it was mm -hmm. kind of nice beating somebody like that. Yeah. And like knowing that I can go get my pro card now and he's still trying to get his pro card after three or four years, I think he said. Mm -hmm. So how old are you? I'll be 28. Okay. Yeah. We're yeah. the same age. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I got a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. You Well, yeah, you're at a good spot. Cause like me and you we, with the waist training, I feel like we we're ahead of the game. Some of the older people, if they didn't already start mm -hmm. trying to keep that waist small, like the it's, it's going to be a little harder when you're older. You and me both know Brady, too. I like me. I follow Brady on Instagram. I haven't seen him in a while, but you used to talk to him all the time, and he got his pro card. And I like he, he's he looks great. So that's what I'm trying to go for. I got the same shape as him. Mm -hmm. I know he said he had to grow his legs, I think, too, because he was in the act. Mm -hmm. He broke both of them. Yep. But yeah, so I, I feel like I can, hopefully I'm like him and just pop right into a pro show and get fifth place right after <laughs> going pro. I, can, yeah, I couldn't I mean, believe it, honestly. Yeah, you know what it takes, man, and, and you're working with a coach so closely and everything, too. That's great mm -hmm. because, you know, I think that's paying a lot of attention to the body part that you want to grow. And, yeah. I mean, we all know how leg day is. It's just <laughs> you got to have someone that can, like, push that weight off of you. <laughs> and Yeah, exactly, and you want to throw up after every, <laughs> every time, so, <laughs> yeah. Is there any exercise that you feel like kind of contributed, like, the most – for me i have energy. lower back issues so like squatting is very hard and like things like that so are my biggest were hack squat and um, leg press and then we had just like just random machines honestly but those two i would say leg press and hack squat were my biggest that helped me grow now when you're doing the uh leg press are you doing different varieties of like your feet placement or was there we do a lot of close feet like just very close Mm -hmm. and just to trigger the quads and not like we don't we do we do froggers too when we do the, you know, the y stance mm -hmm. for up inner but mainly close feet like basically touching all the time and basically your knees touching on those so that's our main one and then for hack squat it's basically the same way low with feet close together so yeah. i that's the two main ones though that probably grew my legs the most because there's and, a dramatic change from my leg growth like from my yeah. pictures that we, i've seen Definitely. Yeah. And I agree. I'm doing the same thing because legs was what I wanted to build up. And it looks like when you built your legs too, like you definitely had a lot of conditioning too. Whoever the photographer was at this show was really good <laughs> at your Oklahoma show. I'm actually surprised because the, well, I, the, I will say the venue for a COVID because we had a different venue before they changed the venue like three times on us. Like this show was supposed to be in Tulsa. Then okay. it got moved to OKC. And then from OKC, it got moved from one of the venues to another venue. But that like stage was perfect. Like compared to like the stage, like the last stage I was on a Pittsburgh show at that Sailors or Sailors, it was like old school. But like the but the show before this in the Oklahoma, it was like really small stage, mm -hmm. and everyone looked really bad from her pictures. Mm -hmm. But I think that's what helped a lot was like the stage and like the lights this time. So yeah, they had like a little bit of a blue tint where it's almost like a daylight. Yeah, it was like a blue purplish, I think. Or something. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, it was like it was like a different little tint to it. That helps because I will tell you what Pittsburgh does suck for lighting. I'm. It's. I feel like it's the worst lighting I've ever. <laughs> it's like the Simpson color lighting. Like. <laughs> it makes everybody look like yellow, especially with the. Yes, exactly. 
so gross. I feel like because the the floor reflects off the tan and mm -hmm. the lights don't help and it's dark. And North Americans isn't that bad because they've got a darker background. Yeah, this year with the tent, I heard it was like tan running down people's faces and like the, just, I mean, which I, I'm glad they still did it, but I heard all about like how humid it was and like the makeup for girls was running all down their face. Oh, yeah. So at least the I judges mean, I, probably knew better. Yeah, I mean, it's not one's fault. I mean, they can, you can't help it. I mean, that was the only option they had. So, and to be but, honest, like, you never know what's going to happen with COVID, but I'm like really curious to see if the Pittsburgh championships happen next year, because I feel like yeah. if North Americans worked out, I feel like then the Pittsburgh championship should be able to work too. That's less competitors. Yeah, exactly. And I think like for me, like my coach wants me to do nationals, which it's, I think it's actually scheduled for, I think he has it. I just got my plant new plan today for like reverse diet. I think it's like the 21st next year. of mm -hmm. the November or October, I can't remember, technically, like, so, because they moved it this year from Miami to Orlando, so I'm not sure if they're going to do something like that, because we have five, five competitors from my gym going to nationals right now, and then my coach is competing oh. in Vegas the, in December, so. Okay, yeah, all the, all these national shows are getting pushed at the end of the year, it's like, that's I mean, why, like, I, I wasn't in a rush, I mean, you're qualified, I mean, I'm not going to rush into something, I want to rather, I literally, we <laughs> Because my weight limit at first was 190 for classic, because I was over, I'm five eight and a half, five nine almost. Okay. But then, but the best part was when I hide it in at the show, I was five eight. I lost half an inch on my feet. Oh. Like that, yeah. So which brought my weigh in down to 180. Okay. I think it was 182 or 180, one of the two. I can't remember what the what it is. So I'm, I have a little room to grow. I thought I had a lot more room, but mm -hmm. I have about seven eight pounds of room to to grow. Mm -hmm. So I rather just. And next year, you know, eight, get eight more pounds of muscle, yep. then walk on stage. So, and I don't think if, if COVID isn't bad next year, I feel like it won't be, because I feel like Orlando, that national show is going to be crazy with the amount of competitors. I feel like it's just going to be like ridiculous amount of competitors there. I mean, it's not saying that's not a bad, good, bad or good thing, but it's just going to be pretty crazy there with like timing going on stage, like mm -hmm. all that crap. So I didn't want to have to deal with all that. Oh, I understand. I know there's there's a lot of people that are kind of like, should I prep for next year? I don't know. And like, I know there's I a lot of next year will be better. I mean, there's they have their they have like new medicine uh, vaccinations coming out and whatnot, like for COVID. I feel like it's going to get better, but we don't. I don't know. I work in healthcare and I hear different things. And Oklahoma is very high with COVID cases, so we hear different things surprising. all the time. So it's bad here. We, can, we have like two thousand some cases a day. So. Well, it's, I mean, Pennsylvania's not doing too good either, from what I hear, especially like... Yeah, I mean, you guys were closed for a long time. We we reopened, like, three months before you guys did. Mm -hmm. Our gyms were reopened and everything, like, way before Pennsylvania was. Yeah, I think, well, my one gym opened up, like, two weeks earlier than what they were supposed to. So was it Life Force? Was like, was that, uh, Life, Life Force. Yeah, or is that what it's called? I, I've been there a couple times. Yeah, okay. Life Force. They opened up, like, I think the week or two before Memorial Day. Okay. I mean, I heard a lot of gyms were like retaliating and they were kind of opening. I heard what like Altoona, there was a gym that did that, mm -hmm. which I get it. I mean, we were lifting out of a, cause I was in prep basically, we were lifting out of a garage. Like we, thankfully we had a member that at our gym that had a garage gym mm -hmm. and we went over, we, it was a long drive to get there, but we, every day we went there mm -hmm. and lifted. And so we at least had the equipment. Mm -hmm. We had leg press, we did squats, we did every, we had all of it that we, all the main things that we needed. Yeah. So that it you didn't could, really if you had to just much. do a bunch of a high volume if you had to. We did bands, yeah, for shoulders, we did some band workout, it, like anything basically to keep, you know, like basically not to like lose any muscle or any, yeah. anything like that, so. Yeah, I, honestly, like I bought bands, like the really good ones from uh, ETS or whatever that John Meadows mm -hmm. promotes, and they they were like better than any other equipment piece that I had. Like I didn't even have to really get dumbbells or anything. I mean, we use bands to warm up for our show. Bands are, I mean, that's what all we warm up with is bands. We only because there are people with dumbbells walking around, but I rather just have a band and do all like because you, you can do everything with it, like to get pumped up. So <laughs> yeah, and lighter to carry around. Oh yeah, a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. So that's good that the the show experience went well and everything too. So, um, was this the only sh like was this the show that you had in mind? Like, so originally we were supposed to do the San Antonio Classic in okay. in Texas, 
And then we were told, oh, well, this show is coming to Tulsa, which is like literally 20, I think the hotel was like 20 minutes from where I live, okay. that they were going to have it at. Mm-hmm. And then everybody basically registered from our t- on my team. We were, and then they told us, "Oh, that was an OKC." So, and then we had a backup. Our backup plan was one in Kansas City, but it got moved to Wichita because that was like the, that was where they could have it because of COVID. Mm-hmm. But it got moved back to this weekend. It's Saturday this weekend. Okay. So basically, we had a backup plan on a backup plan and backup plan just in case. But yeah, I, but when I first started the gym, it was supposed to be San Antonio. Okay. And then honestly, it was it was a lot easier because we didn't go have to drive ten hours or fly. Because flying in peak week, you know that it's not. Yeah, I haven't done that yet, but I'm curious because I have like my like the people that are doing nationals that from our gym that have to go to Orlando. Mm-hmm. I mean, your food and everything. Like, just, I mean, I think it's just easier to get buy your food when you get there and cook yeah. it if you have if you can. Mm-hmm. Like, but like because flying with food's horrible so right it is and to be honest like you're you just don't want to stress out and like I know oh yeah exactly that's what i stress out about <laughs> so well, i stress yeah, about i stress out about that and tan <laughs> tanning is my other one i hate tanning they can't does. kill me because do you do the host uh tanning people we actually yeah, our coach um his wife did all of our tans so that's it was kind of awesome. nice we were i mean like it at first I was a little worried, but it like it did dry nice and it like came out good. Oh, yeah. we, I was a lot, I liked how dark I was. I didn't want to be like a lot of, you see a lot of them on stage are a little lighter, mm-hmm. but I, yeah, I, in the end it was fine. At first I was a little worried. Yeah. <laughs> so, I've heard good things about doing a self tan or having someone do it like. That yeah. Cause there's pro tan, but, and then we use Norvell, I believe it was. Okay. Norvell tanning. Cause they do, it's like, cause pro tan I know is like probably the number one. Yeah. But yeah, Norval, like they have a competition tan also. They're like located in Ohio, I think they are. So they're pretty popular now too. But it it came out nice because usually it takes that like almost like 24 hours to kick in, like to look better. So, but and yeah. And you know you get dark. <laughs> exactly. So. <laughs> Definitely. So let's see here. So now I want to ask, who's your inspiration i know you just you said brady but is there any like, oh like for, yeah so i i mean chris but like bumstead or whatever <laughs> I, he was always like since like he won the olympia i've always been like i follow him on every social media mm-hmm. i mean he's a big dude <laughs> like super tall yeah and then like, there was key on for a while i believe and that but before he went to bodybuilding yeah, yeah but like yeah i mean like those two though were the ones that like I usually followed for everything, like all their Instagram, all like all their posts, all their lifted training, whatnot, what they even eat, like just compared to like what I eat. So, yeah. but yeah, those two, I mean, I would say are the, the most, and then there's other ones, there's probably other ones out there. Like, uh, I'm trying to think, he doesn't even compete. I'm trying to think, but he, he like has all his training videos online. That gave me ideas, like just to, like how to switch up my workout. Mm-hmm. trying to think of his name i can't remember it's he's i follow him on instagram he's from oregon um but yeah those i would say those two them are the most mm-hmm. but yeah those are some top guys there to be following yeah and always got to follow the olympia guy too well i mean exactly and they know what they're doing obviously so <laughs> they're there for a reason do you so. uh watch any of his posing like when you are like because i know you said you did posing with your coach on sunday so like mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean, my posing. I think Chris used to do the same one that I my most classic with my arm. Like I, it's, I think Brady does it too. It's like with the uh, hands on your chest or hands on your side and then pushed up and then yeah. you look off to the side. Mm-hmm. I think Chris did that a lot. I don't know if he what he, cause he switches a lot while I was posing. They all do. Yeah. But that like I mean that's was like my best pose. Like mm-hmm. even with, like the, when I talked to everybody, they that was probably what helped me win a lot. Like on my like judges' decisions. <laughs> So because of the small waist illusion that it created. Yeah, exactly. So because like in my, it was a close one because like even overall it was four to three with a judge's decision. So it was a point. It was only a point. So one, so one judge decided me over the other guy. So it's yeah, and I think, I mean, from the guy I talked to that gave me judges feedback, he said my waist is what he liked the most, basically. So seriously, keep it, that way. <laughs> so. it is the waist, man. That's what I tell. Like when I go to shows yeah. and I watch, like my eye goes right to the waist, and I know the judge yeah. did it too. 
and like for me like i have like lower the lower back issues so like my what happens is my spine like pushes in in the very bottom so it pushes my stomach out mm -hmm. so when i get into like a like some of the post like there's i think there's one on the npc because they they post the ones for my 60 second routine which i don't like because she puts it and i'm not even sucked in yet and then like my stomach is like bloated out but like until like i actually suck it in and it then it looks good so is it this one here uh let's see yeah so that one go i think it's it's the side one it's uh the i think the fifth, i think it's the fourth i think it's the fifth one um, let me see all right yeah let's okay. see that one i'm not even in it yet um yeah like yeah like yeah. right there see like I, it's <laughs> it's she, like, horrible <laughs> you're like, like I, I'm not even sucked in yet. I look like I have a baby in my belly. Like <laughs> this is nice though. Very like the the side. Yeah, I feel like I, my sixties. What I hate about the sixty second, and I always tell everybody, it's not judged. No. And like I don't like that no. because like I feel like it should be, but like a lot of people don't put the effort into it. Like for me, mm -hmm. I added four extra poses probably three nights before the show. Yeah. Which, just because I wanted to hit my sixty second without rushing, like or without like taking my time to good old time basically <laughs> so yeah and it's it's good to slow down and take oh your boy. time and everything i know look at the difference it's, there's a huge difference in these pictures so, oh my like, I, I compared them and i was like this is crazy like, i is. don't even have abs in those in <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible oh yeah my. and you can i mean the dramatic waistline and, and it pushes your lats out more that's like the like the yeah, best part. it's crazy, and then like but like even you, you what I you can even see the shadows too though how bad they are in those pictures yeah, from that Pittsburgh show like just from the lighting. I mean, even though I don't look good, but I'm just saying those shadows like you can just tell like they're pretty. It's pretty bad. Yeah, so. and to be honest, like looking at your legs, I I've seen a lot of Pittsburgh championship show photos, and they all look so smooth. Mm -hmm. Like yep, it's like. I don't know. It, the lighting's just the tan. You can't see any like yeah yeah. You can't see anything really. Mm -hmm. And like for me, I even had to go on water pills because freaking my ve I had, my veins were like crazy in my legs, mm -hmm. and it was taken away from my conditioning. Mm -hmm. So I had to take one pills to like during the, like four pills a day to get my legs not as veiny. Mm -hmm. So I ate pancakes the morning of too. That's awesome. <laughs> I was flat. I had flat pancakes every Sunday I think until show week, and then then I had on show day I had pancakes. That's so awesome. <laughs> my metabolism's way too fast. That's basically what my coach said. Because he so, said, he posted a thing on his Facebook, I think it was. I was at like less than 3% body fat. Wow. So, yeah. And I was, I, I'm still recovering, I feel like, because my body just hates me for that. Because I had nothing, it had no energy, it had no fuel. So, exactly. But yeah, there's no, there was pancakes. nothing. <laughs> so, are you probably, you're a heavier carb kind of guy, I'm sure. So yeah, I had carbs the whole way through prep until so p basically all the way up until peak week I had carbs, mm -hmm. and then on peak week I had uh, six ounces of chicken, sixteen grams of hot sauce, of Louisiana sauce, and then I had we were taking this. It's like coconut m m oil. Oh, I think it's called. It's like octane boot. It's like a, you can buy it anywhere, but yeah. it like it, it kills the cravings. Even though like I still had cravings, but it helps. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and then those I literally had that six times a day. Wow. That's all I ate until I think Thursday. He finally gave me rice and grinds from um, okay. so rice and grinds were nice, and then uh, corn syrup. We oh, just, yeah. like literally chug corn syrup. Hell that was our big thing before getting on stage. Corn syrup would basically take a gulp of corn corn syrup and and that was about <laughs> you're good to go. <laughs> That's interesting. So instead of like a honey or jelly on a rice, yeah, cake, and it, I feel like the corn syrup was way better. And but the only thing it did to me was dry mouth me. Because like when when I got my rewards, they were like smile. I couldn't open my mouth, like I literally was dry shut, and I had to walk off stage and grab a water from my coach because I couldn't I couldn't even talk. Yeah, because it's, it, cause it's just a, it makes it real dry in general. So well, the tip for that I've heard um, I've never had to do it, which probably says something. But um, Vaseline, like I know, uh, yeah, I guess put yeah. it like put it on, on your lips. teeth. Mm -hmm. Cause if it's I never thought about that. I might do that next time because it was horrible. Because they were trying to, they did an interview like on me after, <laughs> and I was like sitting down there trying to get water, but I couldn't drink a lot because I was going back on for bodybuilding. Because so, I competed right. in middleweight bodybuilding, also. Mm -hmm. So and then that I was going back on literally like 20 minutes later for that. So I was trying to stay away from water. 
Yeah. It's just like, can we just wait a little bit? Longer? Yeah, it was, <laughs> I just want to, I was dead at that point. So <laughs> yeah, Vaseline, I, I've, I've heard that put it on your teeth. I've, that was like a really early tip that I learned in bodybuilding. They, they said, get Vaseline, put it on your teeth. That way you're like forced to smile when you're on stage and it kind of like, oh my gosh, I, I didn't, everyone was like smile. I did not smile one bit. I'm one of those people, <laughs> even during my pictures after my overall picture that one of the bodybuilder that won the overall, yeah. he sent it to me on Instagram. I'm not even smiling in it, but I think it's just, I was so tired. Like I Probably. was so drained at that point. Like I wasn't, I just wanted to go eat and like go home and relax. I was I was dead. You're like, I did the damn thing. Let me go. Literally, yeah. And I, I usually smile, but not like just not then I guess so hey, that's okay um you know like that was a thing with Ian Valier they were saying how come you never smile on stage and then they gave him shit for it and he's just like well, see like I men's physique guys I feel like have to smile because that's like their whole upper body in their face is like their main but like for us it's not as important because we're not mm -hmm. judged on it so <laughs> it's whatever well men's physique is like bikini and bikini yeah, is exactly. a beauty pageant and then same for the men's physique it's like they get all a little tiara more. after they're done yeah <laughs> yep. there's a chance they could get a modeling contract so they have to have that exactly <laughs> <laughs> so what you've always done classic so that's good because i was gonna say you've never had to start in men's physique or anything so no i want i didn't want to do i wanted something that included my entire body like i men's physique is i have nothing against men's physique at all mm -hmm. it's just that i wanted my you know i want it to be like upper body legs everything showing and feel like you know like a true that's how bodybuilders always were until yeah. men, men's physique was added in whenever years ago but that's I mean, and that's what I told Derek and Derek actually wanted me in classic so he didn't mean I because I was talking about men's physique and he's like no he's like no he's like he told me classic so I was like fine mm -hmm. so that's why we, and then basically he pushed it on me too so so what then got you like how did you meet Derek what got you into oh Derek I met through just people I mean everyone knew Derek through I mean yeah I mean like I, I there's so many people at LA Fitness back home that knew Derek mm -hmm. and then like um and i just started talking to him basically and i was like i want to compete because i was like after because i started lifting only in college okay. my second year in college i started sophomore year mm -hmm. so like when i was like 20 i started getting more into it okay. but then after you're into it for so long i wanted to do something more yeah because you get like you, i mean you can lift every day but you want it like something like for me i wanted to because i didn't have sports anymore mm -hmm. didn't have anything else was, so i wanted to be a hobby Hob the hobby was the gym and then always and then it turned into competing yeah. which I completely understand. Yeah, because I, I mean, what else do you do at this age? Like, there's not a lot. <laughs> right, especially when you get into the gym and plus going to LA Fitness, there's definitely other competitors there, so. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, I mean, in, in the Greensburg one, like everyone knew everybody, which was kind of nice. Mm -hmm. So I mean, everyone got along. And you competed against some of the people you saw there, so. Right, yeah. and that's always motivating. <laughs> no, exactly, yeah, so. Yeah, um, I forget what my next question was. So you're getting into your off season, right? Yeah. We're going to get ready for nationals. So I know you said you just got your reverse plan. Oh uh, yeah. Is that so, going to be a slow and crazy? I mean, it's like six, six ounces of chicken, six ounces of uh, brown rice. Um, like I get one meal is chicken and avocado, a small avocado, mm -hmm. and then two meals are oatmeal and protein shakes. Oh, okay. So it's nothing crazy. It's boring. I'm not going to lie. But like, I'll get like, I'll, my cheat meals, up, I can probably get multiple now yeah. because I my metabolism, like I said, is like so fast. Like from show day to now, I think I've only gained 12 pounds. Yeah. So that's, that's I thought, which, which is fine because I mean, that's without having, you know, anything basically. I, I didn't like go crazy, crazy. I did eat a lot of cookies, but. Cookies are good. A lot of cinnamon buns and cookies. Yes. That was bad for a little bit, but because I took a little break and went to Kansas City for a couple of days. And they have a lot of food options. So. Oh, I'm sure. But that's good that you can do that. Because if you want to do nationals or any big type of thing like that, I think it is good to just kind of like get it out. Everyone of needs a break, honestly. Yeah. Like no matter what it is, if it, like, it was, I think we were there for three days. Mm -hmm. Like I just needed something after the show just because like, I didn't want to come straight back here and start going to the gym again. Like I just needed like that time to clear everything. <laughs> So. Yeah, especially after a big win because you know in your head you're like you know i kind of deserve it and like you said you were like three percent body fat your body yeah, exactly like crap and, and i didn't like go crazy it wasn't like i like ate like split like so so much that like i felt like crap 
I yeah. ate a lot, but like I didn't like go. I didn't gain like 25, 30 pounds. Like some, I know some people who do that. So <laughs> my last show, even when I did the Pittsburgh show, I gained like 20 pounds after the two days because I ate like a whole dozen of donuts, a pizza, <laughs> and like I didn't do that this time. I wasn't as bad. So we all have to do that at least once, though. I think you kind of yeah. have to learn your lesson and be like, do not do this again. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, because, like, uh, heartburn is what kills me, so I get the heartburn, Ooh. and, like, after not having all those carbs and everything, I got heartburn more than anything after this this show, so. Oh, and, and you're right, because it's, like, you'll feel like crap and be, like, that wasn't even worth it, like. No, it, it really wasn't. <laughs> yep, exactly. So, do you have any, like, tips for beginners? I know that you've done two shows, and you've learned a lot, so is there anything that you'd like something that sticks out that you're like if someone so basically someone get into the they someone get into bodybuilding you're saying yeah especially class biggest thing is a lot of guys yeah. in it the biggest thing is find a coach yeah. find a posing coach if your coach doesn't do posing because posing literally as you saw in my pictures the two different ones mm -hmm. from my picture show that my posing is drastically different in bed and it literally that's what wins the show for you your, is your posing mm -hmm. i mean you can diet you can do everything like your coach has you do and everything but that posing if it sucks and your diet was amazing you're not gonna win yeah because i mean i there's people i know that like should have won shows but their posing was so bad mm -hmm. like that so that's my two biggest thing is find a coach and find a posing coach if your coach doesn't do luckily what's nice about my gym is we have three trainers and then we have my head my, my main coach mm -hmm. but the one guy used to be a dance he, like, he did dance all through his whole life so he's good at choreographing like everything he's good at that kind of stuff so mm -hmm. it helped me out so I don't have, to, don't have to pay somebody else yeah so I just have everything's all included in one place and so just depends if you can find that or not right right and, and get you're deep right tissue massages done too that really helps massage yeah especially you, you you go to i think you go to what's his name adam also adam. right yep adam's great uh, adam was the best i missed adam so much that was like <laughs> I, I used to go to him like every week when i was back in when i lived in monroeville oh yeah like he he was the best and definitely hands down the best in Pittsburgh area oh for so. sure like everybody goes there like <laughs> I luckily yeah i luckily found a girl out here that does like she's like uh, not as good probably but like very very good mm -hmm. but yeah if i go ever go home i'm just gonna come see him at least once or twice you have to yeah. man and get like if you know when get in when you can because i'm at the point oh, exactly where popular i'm like every time i see him now i'm gonna be like all right i want this day he's like the best he's he's well priced too like yes. out of anybody i've ever been to he's like the best priced like i've never like out here it's over you're paying 130 dollars yeah like, and that's thing. so i mean he he's definitely the person to go to definitely so, yeah and he's yeah, that's, so yeah, that's, that's the third biggest one because that helps a lot yeah mm -hmm. so it loosens everything up so especially before show did you uh you were getting massages done before your show yeah so i had i used to get them i got a couple deep tissues like three weeks out i think two weeks out all it was like two weeks but then show week wednesday before i left on friday i got a 30 minute quick squish massage okay. because it doesn't it doesn't uh, go against your muscle fibers mm -hmm. it doesn't break them down and she just goes with the muscle itself and just loosens everything up mm -hmm. so it i think it helped i got a little knot in my back but like i got if i got that fixed pretty easily but she like uh, got all my trigger points taken care of and i felt like i, I'm, I can easily pose better when mm -hmm. i like all that's taken care of in 30 minutes like that's all i need it yeah. so yeah right. i always recommend getting like just a quick one on show week definitely yeah Crazy. early so that you don't yeah, exactly. yeah exactly yeah i agree because when especially like like for figure when i'm doing a quarter turn it's like that that lat and oblique it's like it can really get stuck so if you don't get like the massages and then mm -hmm. practice your posing you know it's just yeah, she was always telling me like when i think it was like my si joint was always getting stuck at the bottom of my lower back mm -hmm. so i i went to her and then i went to my chiropractor straight after and he popped it but he would pop it because i was loose enough Mm -hmm. So I basically, what was nice is my chiropractor, he goes to my gym also. So I used to see him oh, weekly. So it's perfect. like, perfect. I had to get all everything, everything done at once. So, <laughs> so you literally work, work and then you work out and like, everything's there. Like you've got it. It's perfect. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I don't have to work cause I, I, I used to get a chiropractor weekly too, when I was back in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. but it was for, way further away. Mm -hmm. Now I just get it all done in one area. <laughs> so yeah. 
Yeah, and, it's um, perfect. Now, going back to the waist trainer real quick, does that help? Yeah. Do you wear it at the gym? Yeah, so I use a squeeze the squeeze me skinny one. I don't know if you ever heard of that company. I use that one. I st I started with uh, extra small and I worked my way to a triple extra small. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and I think it was tough to get on, but like it worked. But we we would wear it from beginning of workout to end the workout. Mm -hmm. It helped a lot because my posture too. It like kept yeah. me straight, so I didn't like my back lower back didn't hurt. But yeah. I'd wear it through every day. The only day you didn't really have to wear it, but I still wore because my back was uh, back day. Okay. Because it would restrict some of the movements on your lower back. Yeah. But yeah, I it trimmed my waist at least a couple inches because I was like a 30, 31 waist. And I think I walked on stage at like 27 or 27 and a half. Especially so. all the leg day that you're doing. I feel like leg day, you know, just from, you know, the way that people breathe and how their core is engaged in like yeah. squatting or whatever. Like that is the day to be wearing it, if any day. It helped a lot on leg day from just like when I even just even hack squat, keeping my back not curved because of my back, lower back problems and just anything in general, I think it helped with on leg day mm -hmm. just because like my lower back used to hurt like crazy. Like if I didn't wear it, if I would forget it one day, like my lower, like for leg day, my back would kill me. Oh, for so, sure. Yeah, yeah I wear mine like when I'm standing here for work, I just put it on and it just helps. Mm -hmm. And then I know some people wear it all day. Yeah. yeah. Some people wear it all day. I mean, they just can't, I wouldn't sleep with it, but like, I know someone who did try sleeping with it, but. <laughs> I've heard something. people sleep with it too. I literally don't know how they do it. I mean, cause there has to be times where you wake up in the middle of the night and they had to like rip it off. Like. Yeah. I couldn't do that. Cause I roll <laughs> in my sleep too. So I'd probably um, pop it off, but. Yeah. 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 But definitely a waist training was another, I mean, for, especially for beginners, waist training, that was another, that's another one. Like, yeah. And it's it, good because you're helps. coming from a guy because I know guys that always get so intrigued because they know that I wear one. And they'll ask me about it, and I'm like, they make ones for guys. Like I know guys. We that we them. actually use the girls' ones though. We don't even buy the guys' ones. So what we do is we flip it. Like okay. we flip. So the girls' one, like how how it's hover design, I can't. Even, but like we just flip it yeah. over and button it the other side, the other way up, because because you know, yours goes like this, ours just goes yeah. the opposite. Right? Ours is. It's but uh, yeah. you probably put the uh, bigger side on the top because yeah it's, it's something we, yeah we literally just put it but they do make men's I just we don't don't buy them because we think the girls ones are better so. they, they kind of are and then sometimes they're probably tighter and waist trainers yeah. don't want to be tight like like I said I went from the I went from the extra small to a triple extra small people tell me that and, all the time when they're like asking about sizing I'm like listen like you want that shit tight. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like a lot of people, like it, people like get it in the mail. They're like, "This is never gonna fit." You just have someone pull on one side, and you pull on the other, and then once you wear it like two or three times, yeah, it's stretched enough out that you'll be able to get it on yourself. I always it's say it's like braces. Time. If you've ever had okay. braces, it's like mm -hmm. it. You know, like when you get braces and you every every oh, so you get them tightened up and everything. Tighten. Yeah, mm -hmm. it just gets exactly. easier over time. So it's one of those. Mm -hmm. things. Yeah, yeah, I never thought. Yeah, I never thought of that one. Yep. Yeah, that's what I always tell people, just when they're, they just don't understand the whole, like, concept of fitting into it. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do for work, then, out there in Oklahoma? I'm an IT administrator for a um, bunch of, there's a clinic I work for at Morton Comprehensive Health. We have, like, six different, five or six different clinics, there, depending on COVID, we had a couple shut down. Okay. But uh, I build uh, electronic medical records okay. that they use to document on patients. So, like, I build them from beginning to end and then improve them so that's basically what i did in pennsylvania but i did it with anesthesia and operating room because okay. we that was my allegheny health network mm -hmm. and then i moved here under a contract uh, to hire they hired me on after a year and then i love it a lot because i work from home so that's like, work crap awesome. it was so nice working from home and getting my meals in but like <laughs> great i'm right i honestly i'm ready to move again so not because okay. i don't like the area just because i like traveling Oh, uh, yeah. See, I like to travel too, but is there somewhere you have in mind? Uh, I looked at Kansas City. That's like the big one. I was just, that's where I was, like, obviously. Um, but um, Tulsa is, to me, is not a city. You can literally drive through Tulsa and out of, out of Tulsa in like five minutes. Like, you know how like Pittsburgh is? We got our tunnels, Squirrel Hill, or mm -hmm. Pitt, and then we got a ton of traffic going in now. It took me an hour and a half to get to work every day there from yeah. Renewable. Like, here I can drive to work. I can leave my house in 10 minutes and be in Tulsa. Yeah, yeah, it's a it, little it's, city. <laughs> it's very, it's too, it's not a city at all. It's just a city on a map. It's okay, like see, it's like Greensburg. Uh, yeah, it's really honestly kind of like Greensburg. I <laughs> just got a couple more buildings. Yeah. So, right. It's, right. It, it, it's just, it's a small city, mm -hmm. but 
it's it's very laid out very wide too like there's like there's the streets are a lot not like Pittsburgh where you know our streets are like tiny like coal mining yeah. city mm -hmm. I mean it's all spread out here so mm -hmm. that's good it's probably warmer there too <laughs> it's, yeah usually yeah it hasn't snowed it basically every time I'm, since I've been here it's only iced mm -hmm. like if we get something it's icy yeah. it's never snowed snowed so yeah I don't miss that Nothing I I'm not ready for the snow <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah see i was from i was from the seven springs area that's where oh. my family was from so i was used to it up there so dang yeah that's uh a little much oh that reminds me i, w I wanted to tell you donnie said hi because he said he worked with you at dick's sporting goods <laughs> oh my god i haven't seen donnie in forever yeah donnie because yeah you, yeah you designed his logo didn't you for his um I did. yeah mm -hmm. yeah i haven't seen donnie because donnie he used to live at la greensburg yeah yeah that's yeah I like, yeah i haven't seen him Matt. <laughs> Yeah, I used to. Him and I worked at Dick's Sporting Goods. We we hated our lives there, but yes, yeah. we, we were. We, we I worked. At, I worked there for like eight years. I was there for a like year, after six or eight years, something like that. He, I don't know how long he was even there for. Probably I, not, there. I don't think long. I remember seeing him there on a Black Friday one year. Yeah, I don't remember because like I remember he he started that whole thing though, and I remember you uh, uh, hit the podcast also, and then you made his logo. Mm -hmm. So I forgot about that. Yep, and then I started mine. I was like, I've been, I was sitting on it because like. I love podcasting and I just, I don't know, like there's a lot of podcasts, but they only interview mostly pros. And I was just yeah, like, yeah. I think amateurs have cool stories too. So yeah, um, I mean, exactly. And we're, and we're working our way up to be a pro. So, I mean, that's what well, we're trying for. So it's just who a doesn't like that kind of journey story, you know? Yeah. It's our journey yeah. to a, to a pro. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. And I'm trying to get more guys on like, <laughs> <laughs> well, where's Brady at? Why don't I get Brady on here? I'm trying. He's always all over the place. Now that he's a oh, pro, it's hard to get him to sit down and talk. <laughs> I, I I believe it. I see his stories on Instagram. So <laughs> I was just uh, like, can you stay put? <laughs> 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 he's funny like that. I, I'm thinking eventually. I know him, and um, I'm sure you you saw Dougie Flex. He uh, just oh like, yeah, you know, I did see that. Yeah, I saw that too. In the area, I've mm -hmm. been thinking about reaching out to him, but it's the same thing. Once you go pro, I think you have like that like pro high, and you're just like kind of yeah. I mean, it's whatever. I mean, during the holidays, maybe you can get them like with Christmas or like you know, Thanksgiving or something. I'm like, so, I know you guys aren't doing anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The gyms are like close early that day, <laughs> so. <laughs> And I'm like, most of you got to get ready for that pro. Well, Brady already did his pro. Yeah, day Brady too. already did that. He's past that. <laughs> that was a good show, though, for him. Like, I didn't watch it. I did see the pictures and everything like that. And then I saw he got fifth. And I was like, wow, for your first yeah. pro show, that's sweet. Like, I mean, like, because a lot of people don't even place their first show. So. No, yeah. And his, he definitely had probably, like, other than the winner, his back mm -hmm. definitely was what kept him up there. So that's my go-to is my back. Like, that's what, like, everyone talks about because, like, how the shape, like, how the shape? The small waist to the big back, yeah. A lot I mean, his of, is bigger uh, than mine, but, <laughs> so. Yeah. But, but, yeah, but you, obviously, you're on the right track. You are not in a bad spot. Like, you've got the weight. Oh, yeah. And then every, you're like me with figure. It, you, the bottom and the top just got to grow. Everything in the center just <laughs> <laughs> that, that's literally what the judge said he's like don't let the waist grow and i was like waist train that's <laughs> like that's what i'm gonna have to do yeah so. for real i think that's a great tip for everybody you know what i mean just competitors yeah mm -hmm. so did you say what show or uh national show you're going for next year um it's just i it's, i think it's just the it, NBC now i think it's called just NBC nationals the one in Miami, okay. Yeah, it's usually in Miami, oh, yeah. yeah, and then Orlando. Orlando basically took all the shows this year when that they, when they could, so. I tell you yeah. what, if I got to fly to Florida next year, I will make that happen. Yeah, I mean, Atlanta held the last one, too. Atlanta had the New York Pro, right? Yeah, so. Yeah. I think it was New York Pro, yeah. So, I mean, they're kind of everywhere. I know Emily did a show, too. Emily. Schubert. Uh, the, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know which show she did, but um, I think she did the Chicago Pro. Is that what she did? Yeah. So I know, like, they're, you're still having them. They're just kind of different areas. They're not in Chicago or other places. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I'm trying to think. Like, I don't. I think the St. Louis Pro and the Pittsburgh Pro were two pro shows that did not happen at all, and the Toronto Pro mm -hmm. didn't happen. Oh yeah, true. So, Toronto. Yeah, Toronto. Like definitely. anything that was super early in the year was just completely canceled. Yeah, and that's why, like I said, I'm I'm fine with waiting. I'm not gonna rush. So, no they point. have a good off season, you know. Just or yeah. 
you know, you, you know what you're going to need to do. And if you're with your coach so closely, I mean, you're not going to skip a beat. You'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. I'm not worried. Not too worried at all, actually. Well, I've had you on for quite some time, and I think that that hits all my questions. Is there anything that – oh, I know. One more thing. Oh, what's up? Your dog. You still got your dog? Yeah, he is currently in his cage because <laughs> – I just picked him up from the border, the yeah. boarding people this morning. I picked him up, and he looked like Raggedy Ann because he <laughs> blew his coat. His yeah. entire fur coat is now blown out, and there's fur everywhere. My <laughs> car is just a fur ball right now. I'm sure. So, I, I know how huskies are. Yes. Yeah, so he's here. I'm just afraid to take him out because. It's okay. I'm just fur. wondering because I know you've always talked about your dogs. So. Oh, my God. I love him to death. He's just, yeah, it's that time of the year. So it, everything's every like there's for I literally vacuum daily like I just leave the vacuum out. So <laughs> that's the only thing I hate about huskies. But that one thing I hate. Well, so. at least they're high energy to keep up with you. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that's another one. <laughs> and when's your birthday? Uh April twenty sixth. April. Uh shit. Where are you? Twenty six. Oh, you're a Taurus. Yes, I'm a Taurus. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> You're very like bullheaded. Huh? Like, what is a little Taurus? Like, come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to ask. I always ask everybody just because I, I don't even look at my, like, any of my stuff unless someone tells me it, right? <laughs> like, all the things you see, like, I'll post it on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Oh, you're a Taurus. Oh, you're blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so. Hey, sometimes, hey, I don't live by it, but I tell you what, with, with competing and everything, sometimes it's just like that, like a motivational thing. You're just like, oh, yeah, I'm a Taurus. Yeah, okay. Today, I this is, you know, maybe why I'm feeling this way or something. I mean, I know <laughs> I that sounds it. crazy, but I've read stuff and I'm just like, that's why my focus is like not there. <laughs> Jesus. Well, hey, I just don't, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I just don't care, I guess. That's it's okay. Guy, it's yeah. usually a guy. A guy, a guy just just go through life. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming mm -hmm. on. This was really fun. And I think a lot of people will enjoy it and yeah if anyone has questions they can always find me on my instagram yeah what's me. your instagram account for everybody? i think it's uh, it should be matt underscore my last name key okay so i've had people ask me questions like on there before it's kind of it's kind of nice because like i i literally knew nothing before i started like i started out a plan of fitness like everybody else and i learned i kind of like grew my way up and then i got the la fitness and then mm -hmm. learned more got a coach so i started from it's a process others so I used to drink those freaking uh, mass gainer shakes because I didn't know what I was supposed to do. So, because I was a tiny little kid. <laughs> so. hey, well, and that's what I think with you guys, that's what happens sometimes when the smaller guys, they just, they want to put muscle on. They don't want to be skinny anymore. That's, yeah. I mean, I started out probably 130 pounds. I'm one, I was 196, 197 when I reached my max this show mm -hmm. before I started cutting the weight. So, in high school, I probably weighed 120 when I graduated. <laughs> So, yeah, there's a big difference. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, you just have a great metabolism. Oh, and it, it's good for now until I hit my 30s. So well, yeah, we'll enjoy how, it. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, we'll see how it goes after 30. So. Well, sweet. well, then if everybody, anybody has questions, reach out to you because mm -hmm. I do know men that struggle with putting weight on. And I'm literally like, you just eat. Yeah, that's, and people don't realize it's the hardest part, though. Eating, eating is harder than working out like well it's probably why you do a lot of shakes or at least two shakes a day yeah two shakes i mean shakes aren't bad the whey protein does like upset the stomach like, like yeah. it does kill your stomach but there's the other like you can do different like there's different companies i think that are better for your stomach like, like i use dimatize a lot okay and i think dimatize is like way better than like some of the other companies out there for, yeah like, i've done issues. their casein casein protein yeah there. so it all depends. I mean, it's, and it's the part of the, Dimatize is probably the healthiest I think I found, like for a low calorie, like carbs and everything. So, but it all depends on everyone's stomach's different though. So. Ain't that the truth? Like, yep. especially now with people looking at like gluten stuff and then uh, more and more people I know have like IBS and. I mean, I take oh. pancreatine with every, I take pancreatine and probiotics every day. Yeah, definitely. So, take just that for that reason. Especially with COVID, they say the uh, probiotics and, of course, your basic vitamin. I was still taking that, and I still got it. So. Oh, really? I mean, yeah. If you look at my interview, seven weeks out, I got COVID. I lost my taste <laughs> and smell. Didn't get. I didn't have any other symptoms, though. No fever, no nothing. No aches. It was just kind of like five days of no taste and smell. 
I've heard it, that. it affects everyone differently, but like I still was able to eat my meals. Luckily, I was still able to go to the gym late at night when no one was there. Yeah. So, I mean, you kind of just push through it. Still, if you're in prep. <laughs> definitely right yeah. you know, i had to do the whole mask thing and like you said you were going late at night to, to avoid people but yeah i was going like yeah exactly because I, I would just wear a mask and i'd go wear a mask and clean my equipment but like while well, we have a private gym luckily so it wasn't right. like i was going to like an la fitness or like a big gym and disposing people i was going by myself to a tiny gym by my coach owns so what's your cardio like um that's funny i didn't do cardio at all probably. really no well, cardio Fast metabolism, all right. Literally, exactly. I literally, if I probably would have done fasted cardio, I might have died. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I yeah, you're right. I couldn't, I, uh, there was, I, it was the first time I'd never done cardio, though, and yeah. I didn't do a carb rotation either. Okay. Like, people do that carb rotation. I didn't have to because my metabolism just, I didn't need to. That's like, awesome. Ate, ate That's so ideal. Every day. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was completely different prep from my last prep, but I feel, I was, I feel way better. I felt way better about it, like, this time around. Doesn't so sound I, like I still second guess energy. myself, like going into the night before the show, like I'm not going to be where I want to be, but that's just your mind playing games with you. So like that corn yeah. syrup. <laughs> yeah, corn syrup is great. I'm telling you, mixed corn syrup with rice and grinds, the unflavored rice yeah. and grinds and corn syrup. Mm -hmm. It's the best, sweetest taste in the world. And you can add chicken even too. Hey, so, I've heard that. That's good. It's like, it's basically like, it's that. like mashed potatoes and gravy. Literally, yeah. that's what it, like, that's what it was chicken. Yeah, I agree. It, that's exactly what it tastes like, except for, you know, without just a little unflavored. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my go to. <laughs> All righty. Well, good deal. Again, thank you. So yeah, you're welcome. I will uh, wish you luck for nationals and a good off season. So I'll probably see, I'll probably be home in Pennsylvania soon. So I'll probably see you at LA Fitness. Let me know. I'll go out. I'm all over. I just over gotta the sneak place. in there. So I don't have to pay. So. Just that's what I do. I that's do, why. I, that's, yeah, I just text somebody from the front desk that I still know that works there, and they yeah, like, like Mike or something. Just put yeah. a hat on and go in. <laughs> I don't even care. So. <laughs> All, All right. right. Well, have, a yeah, have a good night. Thank you.